Thank you, Dan. We appreciate that. And I want to say on behalf, I'm Philip Bull. I'm one of the current board members of Lowell's Board of Education. And I do want to say on behalf of Lowell's Board, we do appreciate the, uh, the good attendance tonight. Uh, you know, we struggle with whether we should have a public forum. There's been a number of uh, community forums held. And uh, like Dr. Smith said earlier, there's been some misinformation. And frankly, we, you know, after the Dallas the City School Board took a strong position, uh, we felt it was necessary to come out in support of them. And then we felt obligated to try to clear the air and try to give the facts and, um, you know, talk about the things that we do know. There's things we know and there's things we don't know, but we wanted to talk about the things we do know and try to clarify some of the misinformation. Uh, as I said, I'm a current member of the Lowndes Board of Education. It's been my privilege to serve uh, as a board member for the last seven years. Mr. Fred Weatherton, who's going to speak in a minute, has also served, uh, I believe, at the same length of time. Fred and I have a little different perspective because we are also businessmen and uh, we've also served on the Chamber of Commerce Board of Directors. And we also work for businesses that are longtime members of the Board of Directors. I mean, excuse me, members of the Chamber of Commerce. So uh, we believe in, in the and support the business community, and we are businessmen, and we certainly share the, uh, some of the same concerns that have been expressed by the business community. And obviously, we see the need for a well-educated workforce. Um, one of the comments that was made earlier uh, by some other groups was that uh, the Lowndes Board of Education uh, has been unwilling to meet with some of these uh, folks that are talking about the consolidation effort. Um, that's not exactly true. Uh, I, I was I'm the past chairman of the board. I uh, was chairman for 2009-2010, uh, and during that time, Dr. Smith and I met with uh, leadership of the chamber and folks who eventually became leadership of the QE uh, organization, uh, Mr. Jason Weisenbaker. One of our other board members is another past chairman. He was a chairman prior to me, and he told me he also had meetings with Dr. Smith and uh, chamber leadership to talk about their uh, plan to go ahead with a consolidation effort and how it might go about it. And as Dr. Smith alluded earlier, we have some issues with it. We don't think it's being handled in the right way, and we expressed our concern earlier on. Um, but we don't we don't support that uh, that process, so that's why we haven't participated lately. Although Dr. Smith and Dr. Casey have had a number of discussions and, and, and have continued to participate uh, in some open dialogue with all these groups. Um, I, I don't want to take too much time because Mr. Weatherman has some key points, but I want to talk about just a couple of things we need to clarify. Let's, let's be sure we understand what this referendum is about. Uh, really, folks, this is not a referendum about consolidation. It's not about unification. It's not a merger. This is a this is a vote to dissolve the Valdosta City School Independent School District. That's 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 what it is, plain and simple. If the Valdosta City School District is, is dissolved, and that's why the, only the city votes because it's only about the city school district. If that uh, city school district is dissolved, then Lowndes County is the remaining school district in this county. So uh, the, all the uh, if that would become your so-called new system. It's really the uh, former city system being brought into the, new, the uh, Lowndes County system which is going away, and then the remaining system picks up all the students. So the new uh, Lowndes County system at that point would have be a much larger system, have 21 schools, and have approximately 17,500 students. Uh, what will not happen, the uh, larger school district will not qualify for the same amount of federal and state funds as the two smaller systems do today. It has to do with the math, it has to do with the uh, socioeconomic status, but the fact is we can do more for our children in these two separate systems than we can do with one larger system. Larger systems just don't get as much outside money. That means, as Dr. Davis said, that if we try to do the same things, it has to be made up with more local tax money. The larger school district will not qualify for the same amount of equalization money for the state. That's one of those complicated formulas that Dr. Davis talked about, but it has to do with equalizing and, and giving smaller systems uh, a little more money than the larger systems get. It gives us a little advantage over trying to compete educationally with uh, Gwinnett County and Cobb County and some of the really large systems in the state of Georgia. Well, when we go together and we become a system with 17,500 students, we don't get as much equalization money as both students, uh, both systems do today. So, uh, you know, both systems are working to provide the best educational opportunity that we can. We have two financially sound systems. They have rich traditions. We believe we can do more with uh, two independent systems than we can do with a combined system. So uh, with that, I want to turn it over to Mr. Weatherington, and he's going to give you some comments further about the business perspective. Thank you.